Good morning, my beautiful little fourth grade people. Uh, unfortunately, I can't be there with you today, so I'm recording this video to make sure that you have everything you need um, to be ready to start your science experiment on water evaporation next week. So I'm going to take you step by step through what you need to do today. Uh, we are going to develop a procedure. Um, of course, a procedure you should know is a list of steps that's going to tell us exactly how we're going to do our experiment. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that and give you what you need so that each of the six different groups, uh, because some different groups have different independent variables and different hypotheses, uh, each of the groups is going to have a slightly different procedure. So I'm going to walk you through and make sure that each group has exactly what they need. So while I'm doing this, the first thing that you need to do is open up your notebooks. Um, we're going to make sure they get passed out. So open up your notebooks uh, and I'm, we're going to pause the video for a second, so I want you to hit pause, and I want you to be able to answer three questions for me uh, before you unpause, okay? So first question is, what is the problem we're trying to solve? Second question is, what is your hypothesis? So your hypothesis should be a complete sentence that uh, kind of matches your problem. Um, so in this case, it should be something like, water will evaporate slower with or if, um, and then you're going to fill in with your independent variable. And then finally, what is your independent variable? So what's your problem? What's your hypothesis? What's your independent variable? So pause the video right now and make sure you can answer all of those questions. Okay, now that you've got those answered, it's time to dive into our procedure. So uh, scientific method, you've, you've all passed the quiz, so you know these steps. Uh, first, we start with a problem, then we've done our research. Uh, you've done some great research using reliable sources uh, to find out about water evaporation. And based on that research, each group chose an independent variable, the one change that you're going to make between the control and the experiment portion of your experiment. Uh, so now it's time for step number four, which is to develop a procedure. So I'm gonna go into week 10, the week 10 folder. Um, and you've already gone to the start here page, that's how you access this video. Um, but I'm going to go into this water evaporation procedure here. Okay, now, some of you may have noticed that when you click on links in Schoology, you get this kind of blank screen. Um, up here is a little uh, arrow and square. If we click on that, it will take us to the document. It'll take us to the link. So I developed this yesterday with yesterday's fourth grade class. Now, it's important to understand this procedure will not work for every one of the groups. Because depending on what your independent variable is, your procedure is going to be slightly different. Okay, so I'm going to take you through this. And as I'm walking you through this procedure, I need you, uh, along with your table mates, along with your group, to adapt this procedure so that it works for your experiment. And I'm going to tell you how to do that. Okay, so first step of every procedure, and I'm going to, I'm going to break this apart here. First step of every procedure in a scientific experiment is going to be to gather your materials. So what materials do we need for this experiment? Well, we're gonna need two graduated cylinders. Every group needs two graduated cylinders. One uh, is going to be the control. It's where we're gonna put just regular old water to see how that water evaporates. And then the other graduated cylinder is going to be our experiment. We're going to put water in that, and then we're gonna add something to that water. Salt, food dye, sugar, coldness, whatever it happens to be. Whatever your independent variable is, is going to be added to that second graduated cylinder. So that's why we need two. Of course, we're going to need water. We're going to need whatever your independent variable is. So if your independent variable is salt, where it says right here, line C, where it says whatever your independent variable is, you are not going to uh, write that. You're going to write salt, or you're going to write sugar, or you're going to write food dye. Um, if your independent variable is coldness, then you're going to write a refrigerator. <laughs> you can't add coldness right into that water, right? We have to put the, the um, graduated cylinder in a refrigerator. Okay, so put whatever you need to put in this for line C. You're going to need a 500 milliliter beaker. There's an example of a beaker on my front table there. I left it out uh, to make sure you can see what that is. That's a, a, glass, um, a glass piece of science equipment where we can mix things. So you need that uh, so that you can mix in your food dye or your salt or your sugar. Um, obviously, if your independent variable is coldness, you don't need a beaker because you're just going to use regular water in both of those cylinders. Okay. If you need to stir, so if you salt, sugar, food dye group, you're going to need a plastic spoon to be able to do that. 
And then finally, this last one, I think I need to talk about this a bit. So for my salt and sugar groups, if you're baking, right? Bakers are not scientists. They're, they cook food, right? They, they make, um, or if you're following a recipe, right? Chefs, bakers, they do awesome work, but they don't follow, they're, they're not held to the same scientific standard that we are. When you bake, when you measure salt or sugar, you do it with teaspoons or with measuring cups. The problem with that in science class is that if you have a measuring cup full of salt and you pound it down, you can make that salt get squished down together and fit more salt in there. So how much salt or sugar fits in a measuring cup can change depending on how compact it is. In science, we have to be much more exact. So we never measure solids like salt or sugar with measuring cups or, um, or by volume. We always measure by weight. Okay, so we're gonna put a certain number of grams of salt or a certain number of grams of sugar into that water when we stir it. In order to measure that, we're gonna need a scale. A scale will help us measure uh, mass or weight, okay? So these are the materials that you will need, okay? Uh, again, for, for, number, uh, for letter C there, if your independent variable is coldness, then you don't need the beaker or the spoon, and for C, you're gonna put refrigerator. Uh, if your independent variable was food dye, then you don't need an electric scale because you're gonna measure that with drops rather than um, with an electric scale. Okay, so adapt that that list of materials to your um, uh, to your individual experiment that your table is doing. So pause the video, talk with your group, make sure you have all of the materials that you need listed. Okay, now that you've got your materials, it's time to design our experiment. Now, remember, if I happen to be absent next week, I don't anticipate being absent next week. I, I'm pretty sure I will be in school. But if I happen to not be in school next week, um, you should your procedure should be so good that you can uh, do this without me. Okay. Um, if for some reason school is closed because of COVID in the future, and I have to do your experiment, I should be able to look in your notebook and follow your procedure exactly and and get it right because it's listed so um, so detailed in your notebook. If both of us are absent, Mr. Campbell should be able to come into our room, look at your notebook, and run your science experiment because your, your procedure is so detailed. So that's what we've got to get um, by the time we're finished today. So let's look at the second step. Let's look at number two here. Okay, I'm going to isolate this so we can see it. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is get our control set. The control is the part of the experiment that is normal, that we're going to compare to, right? So in this case, it's just going to be water. So we're going to take one of our graduated cylinders, and the graduated cylinders are up on my front table, if, if you forgot what they look like, uh, and those graduated cylinders measure um, the volume of water that's in there, and they measure up to 50 milliliters. So let me, let's talk about milliliters for a second. You all have uh, gone to the store and bought a big two liter bottle of soda before, one of the big bottles, right? So that's a two liter bottle of soda, right? I'm just going to write this and we can erase it. That two liter bottle of soda, uh, each liter is a thousand milliliters. So that two liter bottle of soda is the equivalent of 2000 milliliters. 2000 milliliters is a lot of liquid. We, we can't fit that much liquid into our graduated cylinders, but our graduated cylinders can measure up to 50 milliliters, okay? We use the metric system because it's base 10, the same way our number system is. We're not gonna use ounces or uh, cups or any of those measurements that we use when we um, when we're cooking, uh, we're going as scientists we're going to use the metric system. So we don't want two thousand milliliters like a two liter bottle of soda. We want fifty milliliters of water uh, that we're going to put into one graduated cylinder, and then we're going to take some tape and we're going to label that as the control because we don't want to get our control and our experiment mixed up. We've got to be able to collect data on both of those. Okay, so this for every group. Uh, you're going to have the same control. It's going to be 500 milliliters of water in one graduated cylinder. So go ahead and pause the video, get that into your notes. Okay, now you've got your control set up. Now we've got to set up your experiment. We've got to set up the other portion. So if your independent variable is coldness, then your experiment procedure is pretty easy. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to pour 500 or uh, 50 milliliters of water into the second graduated cylinder. You're going to label that as the experiment. And then step four is going to be put your experiment in the refrigerator. Right? Pretty easy. 
for all of the other groups, we have got to prepare the water, uh, prepare the solution that's going to go into the second graduated cylinder. So for, for the rest of the groups, not the coldness group or the darkness group, um, darkness, you would put it in a cabinet, right? Okay. So up here, if your independent variable was darkness, you wouldn't have a refrigerator. You would have dark cabinet or a box or whatever you're going to use. Okay. Uh, but if you need to prepare the solution, prepare the um, mixture of water and something else for your experiment, then this is going to be your next step. You're going to pour 500 milliliters of water into the beaker. Now that's 10 times more than will fit in the graduated cylinder. We know that that's okay. We're not going to use all of that water. We're just going to use that to prepare the solution. So in the beaker, the big uh, glass beaker that, that you see in, uh, in front of you in the front of the room, you're going to put 500 milliliters of water. Then next step, we're going to measure 15 grams of salt or 15 grams of sugar on the scale. And we're going to pour it into that beaker. Okay. Now, if food dye is your independent variable, you don't need to measure. You're going to put three drops, three drops of uh, food dye in. Okay. And we'll assume that those drops are about the right, uh, about the same. Okay. We could measure them with a, uh, like an eyedropper or something like that, but I think we can just do three drops. I think that's fine. Okay. So salt and sugar groups, you're going to measure out uh, 15 grams where it says independent variable, you're going to put salt or sugar. Okay. Then you're going to mix the solution in the beaker with the plastic spoon until it's completely dissolved. Okay. Food dye group, same group, same thing. You're going to mix the food dye in until it's completely uh, dissolved throughout the water. Okay. Then we are going to take 50 milliliters from that beaker and pour it into the second graduated cylinder. Right. So this is going to be your, your experiment. So after step six, Okay. After we're done with step six, what you'll have, uh, and we're going to do this next week, is you're going to have one graduated cylinder with 50 milliliters of just water. And you're going to have one graduated cylinder that has 50 milliliters of water and food dye, water and salt, water and sugar, whatever your independent variable is, right? And now, before we're finished, we have to measure how much water evaporates out of each of those. That's the only way that we're going to know whether our hypothesis was supported. It's the only way we're going to know whether or not water actually evaporated slower with the salt or water actually evaporated slower with the food dye. So we've got to measure. That has to be in our procedure. So how are we going to measure? Each week for four weeks, so every time you come into science class, uh, you are going to measure how many milliliters have evaporated out of each cylinder, and we're going to record that in a table. Not a table like you're sitting at, uh, but, a, but a data table, a scientific table, right? So it would look something like this. Um, you know, you'd have a, a top part, and then up top it would be like date, um, control, experiment, right? And then the first date would be maybe on 11-19, right? In the control, maybe we had three milliliters evaporated. And in the experiment, four milliliters evaporated, right? And then the following week, 1126, maybe five milliliters evaporated. And in the experiment, five milliliters evaporated, whatever, right? So this right here is what we call a data table. So each week for four weeks, you are going to, in your notebook, have a table where you record the data. You take measurements, right? This is your observations from the scientific method. Um, you take those measurements and you record them in the data table. And then at the end of those four weeks, we'll be able to look at that data and draw a conclusion. That conclusion will be either um, that uh, our hypothesis was supported. The data show that uh, whatever we did, did make water evaporate slower. Our hypothesis was not supported. Whatever we did, did not make water evaporate slower. Or something went terribly wrong and we've got to relook at our experiment and figure out what we have to do. So feel free to go back and look at any part of this video. Um, feel free to open up uh, the document that I have here, the one that I just worked in. Um, that's available to you. You can click on it just the, way, the same way that I did, and it will be there. Uh, but make sure that your procedure matches your hypothesis. It has to be individualized for each table. Okay. Um, go ahead and do that, and then you can move on to the next thing in the Start Here page. Okay. Can't wait to do your experiment with you next week. Have a great day.